Okay. This ranger mirror is very intense, but I'm going to spend the one resource on my barbed castaway, and I'm going to flip up an arrow in my arsenal and put a name counter on it. Ha! I have an instant. Hold on. I'm going to pitch two blues, and I'm going to play three red piece of mines. I'm not <laughs> sure if that'll block more than four damage or how that works yet, but I'm going to have a lot of choices for arsenaling next turn off of ponder tokens. Sweet. Well, this Bolton shot has go again, so it doesn't matter. Except I'm going to play Collapsing Trap, and it's defending a thing with go again. Although, does it have to be printed on there? No, it has go again. The attacking hero discards their hand. Do it now. <laughs> no, my hand. <laughs> Do it now. Do it now. It resolves. You have no... You have no yeah, you're going to think about it for a second or anything. <laughs> Do it right now. Ah, my hands which is interesting also welcome to the reaction step our youtube show and it's in our podcast feed maybe Wonderful. our most fun thing we do yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> uh you know welcome we're gonna be talking about spoilers today spoilers from from outsiders and cards outsiders cords cord games I like no, cards. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, uh, guys? Outsiders spoiler season has started, apparently. Again, they set a date, and then they just break that date immediately. <laughs> but that's great yep, for so us. <laughs> today, we're going to be talking about the cards that have been spoiled so far and our takes on some of them, maybe all of them. I don't, we'll see who has what to say on what. Let's, that's let's so find true. out. <laughs> that's a hundred percent the premise of this show. <laughs> Thank you for outlining exactly what will happen. Let's just dive right in. <clears throat> what is a, a podcast but just words, you know? Well, they're like the sound of words, right? Mm. Or or are words sound always. So some words are frailty, inertia, and blood rot pox. Correct. Those are words. But I want to talk about the philosophy here between words and... No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> Let's take a couple... Or other cast. <laughs> take a couple hours to break this down a little bit. All right. Isaac, what's up break, first? Break down these tokens, bro. Okay, so we have three tokens that have been spoiled. The first being Blood Rot Pox. Um, these are all generic tokens, but as far as we know, only apply to um, outsider cards, ranger, and assassin cards, you know, so far. But, um, oh. And yep. Ninja. Um, I don't know if they do yet. But anyway, we'll find out here. The first is Blood Rot Pox. Which reads, at the beginning of your end phase, destroy Blood Rot Pox. Then it deals two damage to you unless you pay three resources. This is obviously a token you give your opponent. Frailty reads, your attack action cards played from arsenal and weapon attacks have minus one attack power. At the beginning of your end phase, destroy Frailty. Um, pretty good against Ranger or, uh, you know... I guess, uh, Kadachis, that kind of thing. Inertia reads, at the beginning of your end phase, destroy Inertia, then put all cards from your hand and arsenal on the bottom of your deck, um, which is very a la Seek and Destroy. And I, uh, I, I kind of like Inertia. Um, I like this kind of like, no, you don't get to like bide your time and set up or, you know, what it's, it kind of like throws a wrench in your opponent's ability to, set up and combo you i'm i'm all about blood rot pox i also really like how all of these spoilers have this uh card stamp on them based on the disease they're talking about kind of this watermark uh behind the text is really cool uh i think also so since i'm going to talk about blood rot pox here for a second we also have to talk about a new assassin action infect, uh, which is an assassin attack action 
attacks for three, defense for three, and cost zero, and is a common, so the red attacks for three, and then et cetera. Uh, it has stealth, and when it hits a hero, create a blood rot pox token under their control. Now, stay with me, because then we're going to also use this assassin attack reaction, and we're going to spike it with blood rot, which costs one, defense for three, is a rare, and I think it only comes in red because there's there's two other ones. Um, and it says target attack action card with stealth, gains plus three, and when this hits a hero, create a blood rock pox token under their control. So you're creating two tokens allegedly under their control, which is six, seven, eight, nine, ten damage if that one attack hits, so it's one for 10, basically, and it would cost them six resources not to take that extra four, uh, which is just crazy <laughs> and awesome. Also, the art on Infect is is nuts. It's like a guy tied up being tortured, and there's an assassin just pouring infected blood rot solution on the dude. <laughs> <laughs> on what looks like a pirate ship, or I guess just a yeah. ship. Yeah. But, you know we're we're in the pit so we gotta assume it's like smugglers or pirates or something totally taylor that was a lot okay you know it was i'm sorry I you got just it. kind of like <laughs> <Totally. you just laughs> took the token and just built the broken combo and i'm still here just looking at the token wondering how it works <laughs> well uh, basically if you hit with these attack actions you are then infected and the knife blade or whatever is then also laced with extra blood rot. So you're fucked, basically. So one last note on the tokens, since we're blazing ahead here, um, yeah. is that all of these tokens are auras, right? So they there are potential um, interactions with them, right? Like... Um, you know, uh, Iris of Reality can swing them. Um, you know, Merciless Retribution will deal damage when they break. Like, things like this. Um, I, I know Prism's LL at the moment. But um, cards being auras or things like this sometimes uh, have, you know, no effect, but also can sometimes have really detrimental effects, right? Like, if you give Prism's a bunch of Frostbites and you're like, ah, huh, you can't move at all. This is great. I'm winning. And then you're really just dealing yourself a million damage. Yeah. <clears throat> it's a it's going to be really cool I think with all these different you know. I wish I guess they're just auras, yeah. They feel yeah. they feel worse than auras. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they feel real bad. It but it's like it looks like everyone's going to have some access to all of them in this set which is really cool. So I feel like limited is just going to be like, and now you have this. And it's just like, shit. <laughs> like, it's just going to be like yeah. the chaotic wild card of like, okay, either you block up really well and hope that you have a good, like two card hand or, you know, you take the damage and just, you know, run wild and hope that you, you know, if like, what is it? Inertia, you just, draw better cards than you actually like maybe that's a good thing too you're like i have a shitty hand i'm gonna take like one point of damage and then get a bunch of new cards and see how that goes uh but yeah the frailty and blood rot pox seems real powerful and it's cool that uh <clears throat> assassin is gonna get some like hit effects uh because currently it's just the milling stuff from arachne's ability uh or I guess, uh, is contract. that his ability? Yeah, the contract, no, he, yeah. His uh, ability is look at the top card. That's right, yeah. So from the contract cards, which is good, but doesn't necessarily make people care about getting it. Um, right. So yeah, these these uh, attacks along with the you know t attack reaction rare cards, which are kind of like the... The bulk. Well, we'll get into that later. But yeah, they these auras seem very disruptive. And coming off of season of people complaining about ice, we'll see how they <laughs> react to this. But I think it sounds really fun. It's interesting. The the fact 
that they're going to be available for everyone, I think is really important because like Ninja doesn't have a lot of hit effects other than just like gaining more. Um, well, I guess that's dumb. Ninja has drawing cards and like gaining power, but, uh, and then everything has go again. So this is going to be busted in Ninja. I'm going to say that right now. Um, and everyone else is going to have a, try to have a good time. <laughs> okay. A few things. First, we have yet to see a ninja card that gives uh, another player any of these tokens. It would seem that there will be ninja cards that will give these tokens as they are uh, a big part of the set and it's set in the pits. But, you know, we have yet the ninjas could just be the, you know, the phi of the set and they're just trying to deal damage and then the other um, heroes try to manipulate them or slow them down. Um, as far as that combo goes, Taylor, you were talking about, I do really like this because it like it incentivizes your opponent to block, right? So like take infect, it's a zero for three. If it hits, it gets a blood rot pox, right? So a zero for three, no go again is like under rate, right? So if you just block with one card, underpowered card, but if you let it hit, it's a zero for five. So it's above rate, right? Yeah. So um, this is just like a really fair way to um, reward you if your opponent is just playing like a really linear game plan and doesn't want to block at all. It'll punish them for that. However, it's totally fair in that if you do buy a card, then, you know, they've blocked essentially five for one card and yeah. um, um, really incentivizes maybe mid-range gameplay. Um, we'll see how effective this is in Classic Constructed. But as far as, you know, just exchanges, I do like this design space to incentivize um, interaction between the players. Uh, you know, we will see, again, we will see how effective that is. The, as you mentioned, the spike cards, though, are insane value. Like, spike with frailty becomes a one for five attack reaction, which is absurd. Like... Mm. One for five surprise damage, or not quite one for five because a defense reaction for four would block out all of that damage. But it's almost a one for five attack reaction that blocks three. So that's like really, really powerful. Two cards and a tunic counter or three cards for 10 damage is uh, kind of maybe on rate, but in limited is, um, you know, quite good. So well, there's a bit of nuance with frailty because if they don't, like, I don't know, like, so, like, we know Rangers are going to be in here. So then, obviously, this hits, like, any card they play from their arsenal, if they have one. Are we going to have regular attacks we can just play from hand? And they don't really have a weapon that it affects. So it's, like, you might not get the value with Spike, with Frailty. Mm -hmm. um, but, so, that one's a little bit trickier for me. Uh, I also kind of want to note on your point about we haven't seen a ninja that gives one of these tokens, but if we look at the earlier spoiler codex of frailty, which is a assassin ranger card, we can assume we're going to get the two other codexes, um, probably codex of blood rot or whatever, which will be also a, a dual class. So, you know, I can, I think we can assume that ninja will have some way to have some sort of play with these um these tokens whether they'll be on some sort of combo line or attack actions that's like uh remains to be seen but i still think it's a pretty safe bet fair enough and yeah that's a good point like spike with frailty is like you know one for four points of value or more if you're facing like Kadachis or spider's bites or something, but, um, you know, it could be a bit less. And like inertia is only applies if they wanted to arsenal a card. Right. So if it hampers them, it's like a whole card. If it doesn't, then it's like, doesn't matter. Um, they're definitely a bit harder to weigh there, but, um, I guess my initial point being these, uh, zero for threes are just like very fair. Um, but the, attack reactions seem to be like a bit above curve but i think that because they only apply to stealth cards it's a way to like sure they're above rate but because they're tied to stealth 
and stealth is maybe like under rate it just balances out or it's like a good way to be able to print like um, powerful cards and still like you know keep it under control totally uh colin do you want to talk about stealth <clears throat> and what that mechanic does stealth does nothing <laughs> next question <laughs> uh yeah, for anybody who missed the uh, post on the Judge Hub blog page, they had a cute little Easter egg where they put uh, white text on a white background that you had to highlight to see. Unless, of course, you use reader mode in your browser and then it just showed up and you didn't get the joke, which is really funny for some people to be like, why are people asking if I read the whole thing? Of course I read the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, oh. Dark mode OP. Yeah. Nerf. Dark dark <laughs> mode OP. Nerf OP. Dark mode, please. LSS. Uh, uh, yeah. So stealth is really just a, you know, it's just a keyword on a card that interacts with other cards. So, you know, so far all we've seen is the uh, attack reactions uh, that interact with it. So, you know, the... The spike with frailty, blood rot, and inertia only affects stealth cards, so it won't work on the contract cards that we got uh, with the release of Arachne. Um, same thing with like uh, Razor's Edge. So it definitely seems to pigeonhole a character who doesn't have a huge card pool into either being contract based or stealth based because you can't just like, it seems like you can't just fill your your deck with both and hope that it, everything lines up. Cause we know how that works out. So <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see what else we get and how heavy into the stealth mechanic, everything plays so far, every card they've released for or spoiled for assassin uh, does interact with stealth, except for the, the, the hybrid cards, which, um, don't so maybe that's kind of where they're gonna uh kind of shore that up a bit but uh yeah stealth stealth is just a thing that is there to remind you that some of your cards don't work with your attack actions <laughs> <laughs> and uh, i think it's know, like aim counters this arrow actually doesn't do anything yeah this has three <laughs> aim counters which means nothing but it looks good or it has zero, yeah. so no text. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Taylor. I don't know. Drill shot is good even without aim counters. So totally, it's the Hashtag one. Hashtag not all aim counters. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. No, uh, no. <laughs> uh, I think we. This is my theory that the assassin characters are going to be able to like hero ability could be to add stealth to Ooh. stuff potentially so then that creates like maybe something more fun to have to interact with or or that sort of thing um so then that way like your contracts also become uh stealthy and then have more value right in in the card pool that would be cool yeah, Hopefully that's but true. If, <laughs> yeah, or there's a piece of legendary equipment or something like that. Mm. You know, I don't know, but um, that's kind of where my mind is going mm -hmm. with all of these things. You know, that's pretty good. I like that. Thank you. Yeah, good job. Yeah, it is interesting that you know Uzuri and Arachne, that there's an alternate Arachne and Uzuri who so far appear to have a completely different um, strategy than the Arachne who previously was released, right? Um, so it, it begs the question, right? Like what, what makes an assassin, right? Like what is the staple attribute of that class? You know, like, um, for some classes, it's a bit nebulous, like permanence or, um, you know, for like brutes, it's just power, right? Six power cards are the, the only thing that ties them together. Um, but all the classes kind of have like a similar theme, at least. So I'm wondering what the assassin theme is. 
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, obvious like a pretty it's a pretty awesome like mid-range plan, but it's just not very powerful. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. getting to fire off in fact uh as like the one card you have an arsenal and blocking with four cards and then like dealing five damage basically is like pretty good you know i would love to deal five damage with just one card uh but is that like without the hero ability it's hard to know if that's like really gonna be be enough and like you said like is is, is that the theme of assassin is like let's just be mid-range or are we, you know, going to have some sort of like, is it just a play on fair cards with hit effects or something like that? You know? Yeah. yeah. Like yeah, one deadly think, strike. With the Arachne Huntsman, it seemed like Mill was the thing because the contract cards were not necessarily tied to, well, you know, contract was tied to his hero ability, but it was the contract cards that Mill... So, but if we kind of abstract that out, because now it's like stealth that does these other things, it is, seems like it's a lot of reactions, um, and like smaller pokey damage, uh, that has some kind of hit effect that is, you know, kind of bad. (laughs) Oh. I did just to tie back to blood rot pox really quick. I did have the thought that like in classic constructed, I think this is essentially two damage, right? Unless you're playing like fatigue old him or something, but in limited play, there may be value in paying off your blood rot pox tokens. Right. And because you could kind of fatigue your opponent a bit. If, you know, if you block out most of their things and then if they give you a blood rot pox, like saving a blue and pitching it like in limited, you have, many less threats in your deck and like because the power level is lower there's a lot uh getting fatigued is um more common for all decks i think so um i just wanted to note that in limited i think that maybe this won't be a free two damage actually i mean well my other point or thing to go here with is that razor's edge is a common so it's also an assassin attack reaction that's free that blocks for three so you can expect there to be quite a few of these and just your stealth cards get plus three power uh so like what a great limited pickup if you're in assassin like i for sure would get this in any color because it blocks for three and it's free so even if it's like a blue that you pitch late game it could like still win you the game or force your opponent to like uh over block or whatever so maybe mm. you are correct to like just like fatigue and maybe arachne will have this like mid-range or azuri will have these like <laughs> mid-range game plans that take you super late but then is also riptide gonna be like going super late and it, we're just in fatigue world here where limited games are just this grind fest where a fishmonger is trying to outwit a uh, torturous psychopath. Who knows? Yeah, I don't think Riptide will be a fatigue-esque strategy, right? Because you have to, like, he doesn't have a weapon, so you have to shoot enough arrows at them to kill them, and you they can just block out your arrows, right, with... We'll see if there's a dominate ability, but um, right by you know just blocking out and saving five arrows, they could still just block those arrows, right? right. So um, you by know. by not having a weapon, you mean like a repeatable thing that has damage, printed right? On. Yeah, a, a weapon that does damage, yeah, <laughs> yeah. not a weapon that loads a piece of ammunition that you then fire, yeah, yeah. I'm also wondering because there are so many attack reactions here and you have to assume that Ninja will have some sort of attack reaction, maybe not, but besides peace of mind, how many tools were the B to deal with these attack reactions? Um, We know that Riptide will have traps, but will he kind of have the edge here and other classes will be susceptible to these attack reactions or will there be several printed... um, cards to you know help help you out here yeah yeah i'm curious 
how many defense reactions, if any, like generic ones there will be, because they've been real careful not to make any new ones just because, you know, Sink Below and Fate for Scene are basically the best ones. So doing anything that's zero for four is real sketchy, probably, like unless you just re make them as like a different card. Um, but you know, it will, it will be interesting. I feel like there'll probably be a couple class or like one class defense reaction, at least for Ninja and Assassin. Um, it seems like Riptide and Azalea might get a couple more, uh, with the trap stuff. Um, but we'll just have to see, and we'll be talking about that in a second. Um, but yeah, the, it's, it's looking a little interesting and maybe a little confusing on the assassin side just because the stealth cards seem to, unless Taylor is correct, which we're praying to Riptide that he is, um, that uh, <laughs> the stealth can be added to other cards. Uh, it, it feels weird that you can't combine these very new assassin cards with these even newer assassin cards to do something that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> but maybe that doesn't matter. And it's just like, you know, you're all over the place. So I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Um, I think the last thing we don't, there's no card for this, but it was just, I think it was spoiled on the, um, was it the living legend? Page, yeah. Living right? legend page with the, uh, signature weapon, uh, that Arachne Solitary Confinement's weapon will be the Orbitoclast, which when you Google that, you find that it is a basically an ice pick uh, that they made a surgical tool to perform uh, prefrontal lobotomies, which if you didn't know is when they put it through your eye and then hammered it in, you know, to break the soft bone back there to spread split the two halves of your brain apart because it was supposed to be good for you. Totally. It's medicine. If you had a mental illness, yeah. Well, yeah. if you had a mental a certain mental illness, uh, and they gave that guy a Nobel Prize for that, which many people, <laughs> look, look this up, many people do not, they think they should go back and take it away from him because they've pretty much proved that it's not, <laughs> not very good for people and kind of horrible. Um, and then there's a lot of other fucked up stuff related to it. So, you know, content trigger warning if you go look at that. But otherwise, that's the spoiler of uh, what an orbitoclast is. I don't know how that becomes Arachne's weapon if he has like a, <laughs> if he's trying to like hammer uh, an ice pick into you, but maybe it's just like a shiv that he stabs you with. Yeah. Hold cool still. Too. I'm, I'm curing you. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you seem to be ailing under some kind of, uh, yeah. Oh, I guess people ailments. were insane. A giant nail through your eye, splitting your brain in half. Yeah. Yeah. They also thought like, Hey, I just shouldn't bathe. That's bad for me. <clears throat> and cocaine was a drug that they prescribed to people. So, <laughs> And put in Coke. They did, yeah. They put in Coke. Uh, that is a very tasty spoiler. Great detective work there, uh, Colin. I do also, I have this question about all of these spoilers. What is it that Riptide is doing that warrants him to have slightly less health? You know what I mean? And if we're going to have freaking traps and defense reactions, why did we put Azalea in this set? We know she hates freaking defense reactions. So how is all of this going to be solved is my big question. Yeah, I don't know. So there's like um, the, well, here we can just talk about this. Uh, there is a card in this set that's been spoiled called Peace of Mind. It's cost two, it's at red, it's an instant, and the next time you would be dealt damage this turn, prevent four of that damage and create a ponder token. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll see, and that's at common, but we'll see besides that, like if traps are just rares and only available to Riptide, maybe that's uncommon enough to not just like make Azalea worthless in the set, you know what I mean? Like there would have to be a balance there that somebody couldn't just gobble up all the defense reactions and then be able to win. 
one would hope. <laughs> well, because like the assassin attack reactions and azaleas dominate, you know what I mean? You couldn't have just like so many blocking cards that those are don't matter at all. But yeah. I guess we will see. I suppose to like uh, we do have ninja in this set. So is going to punish you if you're going to like play peace of mind. Cause that's like just in typical ninja fashion, they're going to play like more than one attack, sometimes mm -hmm. three or four. Uh, and so peace of mind like sucks if you're uh, against a go wide strategy, because you have to like pitch that card to defend one source of physical damage for four, three, or two. And that's just like not a great return if they're going to be attacking you multiple times in a round. So maybe that's where the balance comes in, the balance to the force, you know? Yeah, agreed. Um, Colin, back to your point, I feel like uh, a, the Arachne cards not lining up, I think only feels weird because Arachne is such a recent character. But with characters in the past, it's like like Lexi used almost no Azalea cards. And Azalea couldn't use any Lexi cards. And Phi used almost no ninja cards. You know? Um, like they could have almost been standalone classes except for their equipment and flavor. So... While I think it feels weird because you kind of want more cards for the current Arachne, um, I think it is kind of on brand to have them actually be quite a quite a lot different. Unfortunately, like it would be nice to see the Arachne fleshed out, but yeah, <clears throat> that makes sense. I think the main difference being that most heroes are released in a full set when with cards that kind of built in to synergize with them a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think that's fair. They, that's kind of how they balance the game long term is by, uh, not having cards that, uh, <laughs> my dog just opened the door. Um, why was that closed? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> uh, and then I forgot what I was saying, but yeah, that, that, that makes a lot of sense. I was just kind of. It just feels like Arachne can't do what he wants to do and does so far none of these cards help him do that unless you just are going full into uh, the stealth, which then it doesn't work with his hero ability. So I don't know. I'm going to close my door. <laughs> uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, we'll we'll just have to see what, is going to happen, you know, obviously we still have like so many questions. I do want to mention like how friggin' dope collapsing trap is ranger defense reaction trap defense for three is a blue cost zero and is a legendary specialization for riptide. So you only get one of these bad boys and it says when this defends an attack with go again, the attacking hero discards their hand, then draws that many cards minus one. So baller, it's a majestic. So it's like, I don't know. I think right now this feels like a bomb in the set. Like if you open this, you just like windmill tomahawk this thing down on the table and you just start picking every riptide card and you say, come at me, bro. I'm going to slap you around with fish and this trap. Well, I so guess it cool. depends on how many cards have go again in this set. Yeah. So far, zero. Yeah. So, let me say, so far, <laughs> we've seen zero of them. So may, Majestics have been kind of in a weird spot and limited in the past, I think, other than, you know, the kind of broken uh, Majestic weapons that have been in there. Um, but they're very, they tend to be very situational and not always like, yes, this card is overpowered and limited and I'm going to win the game because of this. It's like, maybe you'll win a game, which is really cool. Like Blossoming Spellblade, probably actually better and limited than uh, it's super than is. constructed, but you you have to like set it up and then it's like, okay, this is really cool, but it's not just like an auto win kind of situation. But I do agree, it's super, super cool. The art on it is dope. The 
ability is cool. It's nice to see where their head's at for traps uh, kind of going forward. Obviously, this is probably the most powerful trap that they're going to have. Right. Yeah. Uh, but since you can you can only have one. Uh, but, yeah, it looks it looks really cool. And it's a blue. Blocks, yeah. blocks for three. Yeah, I guess it's just a solid card. Defense reaction, so it should block for three. Yeah, the, this card's way above curve, but because they print legendary on it, I think they think they can do that, even though we've had issues in the past with that. But let's um, let's give Ranger at least a the, chance to be OP. Come on. <laughs> this yeah. one goes to graveyard though, instead of being pitched to double old time ability or fuse or something though. So um, at least there's that, like at least it goes away and you can't remember and sit cause mm -hmm. it's a defense reaction. Um, but importantly um, it reads defends an attack with go again. So you can play it on a spider's bite or Kadachi if yeah. those are weapons in the set. And it also ends their turn if they like pitch to play Spider's Bite and are holding the one card they were going to play, this will still heavily impact them, even though you're like over blocking the damage. Um, so still very effective there. Yeah, um, dope. Yeah, really cool. Uh, do you guys want to talk about, let's talk about another bomb, Bonds of Ancestry really quick. Ooh. I don't even know if I should read this text, do but. It. Do it, read the whole thing. <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> red. <laughs> red. Two for four attack blocks three. It has combo. If a card with Gust Wave in its name was the last attack this combat chain, this costs two resources less to play and has go again. And when this attacks, you may banish a card with combo from your graveyard. If you do, search your deck for a card with the same name, banish it, then shuffle. You may play it this combat chain. So essentially, in limited, assuming there's a common card with Gust Wave in its name or in CC. Um, essentially, this becomes a zero for four go again. And then at worst, you could get like a um, shit. What's that? Zero for three. Dead I don't tab. play Katsu. Dead jab. No, those are not. Don't have combo. The new one. Anyway, the new zero for three with oh, go again. Uh, and it gets wins? Yeah. So essentially, if you follow up a guest wave, this becomes a zero for four go again, or zero for seven go again, um, with only caveat that it has to follow a guest wave card. Um, you know, which is not that hard to do. At worst, it like blocks for three. And. I think I don't know. It's possible it has a card that follows it, which would be truly insane because then it would be better than a zero for seven with go again. But you know, we'll see. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, at worst it will block for three, but on the offensive side, assuming we have like a a one cost weapon for ninja, it's like a you know a three for five like you you kadachi pitch your blue and then you have two floating and then you can bonds of ancestry at like a break point for your like mid-range ninja game in this highly defensive uh set that we're about to be in what if you like you know what i mean <laughs> gust wave bonds of An ancestry banish another gust wave or no you have another gust wave and then you banish another Bonds of Ancestry or either version of that. And then you just like double Gust Wave Bonds of Ancestry. And it's just like, that sounds like it'd be fun. You'd have to snaps the second Gust Wave because it would not have go again. But I'm into it. Well. Because it would not be fall anyway. All of that thing is correct. You could also have a quick token. You Gust Wave knows. Bonds, Gust Wave Bonds. Right. Yeah, but the second guest wave would follow a bonds, so it would not have go again. Well, we don't know that. The guest wave. Oh, you mean a new guest wave? A new guest gotcha. wave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, you could yeah, also yeah. close the chain. Oh, that would be absurd. They better not do that. Close the chain, <laughs> banish the guest wave that you just... Oh, wait, no, that doesn't work because it, it's when it hits. No, when this attacks. Damn. Okay, never mind. See, that's why you had to read it out loud because I have to... <laughs> I need to be told exactly why my brain doesn't understand how this card works. 
this is a very complicated card and is really, really good just at base. Yeah. And then we'll see if it's part of like some Uber combo. Well, what's cool too is it's a rare. So there's like, I, it seems like if the gust wave card is common and this is rare, you, it seems like you're pretty much happy with all three colors, you know? You attack for three, then you attack for two. And if your name is Benji, you really love the blue. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Which I can't believe Benji's in the set still. Yeah, I'm I'm you interested to see how Benji fits in here. Right? Because like so far it's just Benji can play the blue cards, which suck, but also are unblockable. You know, it's just kind of a weird fringe like hero, like an alternate win condition. But we'll see if there's like cards for Benji because this is Benji's limited set, you know? Yeah, totally. Yeah. <clears throat> so cool. We'll have to see. That's the only ninja card, right, that we've seen other. Yeah, Correct. I haven't even seen a hybrid card. Yeah. So lots, lots to figure out where Katsu and Benji are heading in this set. But, uh, that card does look cool, and the art is also dope. On Bonds of Ancestry. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Uh, let's briefly talk about Barbed Castaway, which may or may not be the token bow. I'm th I think it probably is. So Barbed Castaway is a ranger weapon, two-handed. It has... Um, once per turn, instant, pay one. You may put an arrow from your hand face up into your arsenal. Classic. But it's an instant, which is really cool. And then it also has once per turn, instant, pay one. You may turn a face down arrow in your arsenal face up. If you do, put an aim counter on it. So we're going to continue the design space with aim counters, which is really cool. And uh, you have more than one way to kind of buff your arrows or or that sort of thing. The flipping an arrow to put an aim counter on it is feels like a pretty steep cost. So like assuming your arrow, a lot of arrows cost one. So now your arrow costs two basically to fire it. So that aim counter better be like, worth it you know what i mean yeah this bow is terrible unless aim counters are really good <laughs> you know i mean because the the first ability puts an arrow into your arsenal and does not put an aim counter on it right so then it just makes all of your arrows cost two to just mm -hmm. shoot an arrow so then you're at like two for five potentially relevant hit effect you know, no go again, no nothing. And like you yeah. said, it is an instant, so you can do, do the, like, turn zero play where you can get a bit ahead if they don't punish you too hard for it. And, um, yeah, I like, is there going to be an arrow that's uh, one for six? If it has a game counter, it gets go again or something. So you can pay one to flip it, pay one to fire it so you're at two now and then you could load another arrow and mm -hmm. fire it for four resources this is still terrible even with my hypothetical arrow <laughs> you know like yeah um it's just really weird that loading an arrow doesn't give it a name counter it's just flipping it um yeah. anyway I'm, I'm just rambling now but there's like no good side unless aim counters are uber powerful like much more powerful than we've seen yeah I, I mean, I do like that it is an instant, so that allows you flexibility. And when you manipulate your arsenal, I think, we, as we've seen in Lexi, um, that's just like a straight upgrade um, on how Ranger uh, interacts with their arsenal, especially if you're using like New Horizon or even in Limited, just being able to turn zero uh, instant and arrow into your arsenal on your opponent's turn um, could be really you know, useful and powerful, but yeah, it does, it does seem like a little rough, especially compared with like Voltaire, you know, which is just a better bow. Um, Majestic or, bow. 
Even Sand Scour, which gives you like plus a card if you yeah. rip it off the top and an email. You know, it's just so. Anyway. I mean, well, we're it, also gonna it have... might. Well, the... oh, blah, blah, blah. this right. could be. <clears throat> we might have multiple weapons. So this could be specific for Riptide because the play pattern could be like play defense reaction from Arsenal play peace of mind while having pitched a blue and then now you can defend your two attacks uh for the turn and then with your one floating you can as an instant load your free arrow into your arsenal and then now you have an attack to fire back on their turn and you're not wasting uh a resource and still getting to potentially do the stuff riptide wants to do so it could have a use case in in that scenario nice i like that play line yeah i think Thank uh you. i'm pretty sure that it's been confirmed that death dealer is going to be in the set too I oh i did not know that i nice. feel like i thought they had like had kadachis and death dealers on some page but now i can't find it so maybe i'm lying but um, I would love new weapons personally. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it'd be weird not to include the signature weapon of the hero in the set, you know? Yeah. Since we have Azalea and Katsu, but then I don't know, there's so many heroes and everything's wild and outsiders. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, that's interesting. Go ahead, ahead. Sorry. No, I was gonna say you know, we'll 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 see. And Barb Castaway is slightly disappointing for our boy Riptide there. <laughs> well, so in that in that vein, I was wondering if like, so if everybody can everybody only use their signature weapon, or can, do they get to choose? Right, like, so does Katsu get Kadachis, and Benji gets Needles, and that's like your only option you know, with your different heroes or can you choose or, you know, how that'll work out. Yeah. That's, that's the crazy thing is that needle like sucks. 12 slash is also good, but if we're not, if there's no, or I mean, if there's lots of defense reactions, it sucks. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. So who knows? I think, I mean, as long as they're, if they're tokens or also just any, you know, there's no talents in this set. So like, I think, as long as it's in their class, if you have multiple weapons, you can choose which ones, which could be really interesting and allow for like a different mm. kind of build or, you know, meta to develop <clears throat> and sideboard. Yeah. For different uh, matchups, uh, being able to swap out uh, your weapon choice, which, you know, we'll have to, we'll have to see what else we get when the real spoiler season starts. Was it? Totally. Speaking of real spoiler season, this is maybe something I would like to end on. Which, hero like so between azuri arachne and riptide which hero's uh ability text gets spoiled first isaac your guess azuri okay nice colin riptide Ooh. okay well then i'm going with arachne solitary confinement baby all right <clears throat> check back in and leave a comment. <laughs> Who was right? <laughs> um, I did want to mention, I do think it's interesting, like, peace of mind got printed because they seem like really instant happy. Like, they keep printing instants that prevent damage, right? Like, there's two guardian ones now, um, or one applies to the shield, but, you know, and then there's Oasis Respite, and now there's peace of mind, which is, like, better and maybe old him with other resource sinks and crown where even if you draw blue and arsenal it off the ponder you still want that in arsenal right so it does have severe limitations it's just like i wonder how many damage prevention instants like this they're going to print it is interesting because it's kind of a liability like you said it's two cards for blocking four but um you know it's it's this card surprised me I guess, because it's very similar to Oasis or Spite and kind of a different take on it, but it's um, 
it seems kind of more of the same, but you know. Yeah. I mean, we'll yeah, they, they tend to do that. They make cards that are <clears throat> basically the same, but a little mm. bit different. So, you know, it costs yeah. two, which seems pretty steep. You do get to draw a card. Although that ponders at the end of your turn, right? Yeah. So you just get to arsenal it, right? So you only use it in a deck where you want to yeah. arsenal most of what you draw. Yeah. So like it doesn't help you on your next turn. So I don't know. Could be, could be good. Could be weird. I think it falls in that line of a, uh, along with the quiver. Did we talk about the quiver? We didn't talk about. It. No, we don't do. We don't need to talk. <laughs> We could just say the quiver is a great uh, space that they've opened up that it can yeah. be equipped in a weapon zone without, you know, taking, you know, while having two hands. Uh, and right now it seems like it doesn't help you very much. It's a like, legendary quiver is going to be great. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hopefully there is a legendary quiver. That would be dope. Um, and we'll have to see what that looks like. But yeah, this one just it's expensive and, and you can I mean, use it's, it once. It's good because it's free. It doesn't cost you anything for the deck. So it's an upgrade in that way, but sure. I don't, right. I think it's fairly bad Yeah, or it, disappointing. Maybe it costs you one card that you might otherwise put in there. Um, but yeah, and I'm very interested in that space though. Like we can now have mm -hmm. things, you know, cause they made offhand. So it seemed like, okay, well you need a one handed weapon to have an offhand thing. Um, but now we just have, okay, well, this thing goes on your back, but it's not your chest piece or your head piece and it can do something interesting. So I'm excited, <clears throat> excited about that. Um, yeah. Did we, oh wait, did we talk about death touch? We did not. Dude. What do you got about death touch? Dude, death touch is dope. Uh, Taylor was, Taylor was skipping around. Yeah. He, he started jumping around. He's excited. Jump to the end. Yeah. I know. <laughs> uh, I went crazy. But Death Touch, uh, Assassin Ranger act, attack action, one for six, blocks for two, can't be played from Arsenal, and also creates a frailty token. So it has this really interesting kind of Can't duality. be played from hand. Huh. Sorry, yeah, can't be act. played from hand. Has to be played yeah. from Arsenal. I was thinking Correct. both things at the same time. Um, <laughs> and it makes a frailty token, um, but has to be played from Arsenal. So it has like the weird duality of like, Frailty gives minus one to uh, uh, cards played Weapon. from Arsenal. Um, so, you know, you guys will just be hitting each other back and forth, making each other frail, and then trying to death well, touch each other. <laughs> well, it makes any token on hit. Yeah. So it's kind of a must block. Oh, it makes any. Oh, um, my God. I yeah. didn't even read the rest of the card. See, Isaac, you needed to read the whole card for me for me to know what it does. <laughs> I didn't read any of the card. <laughs> All, all uh, I know about Death Touch is I want the art on this to be a playable character. That's who I would like to be. I have a tome. I have a flaming skull. I have a giant sword on my back. I got a freaking uh, Plague Doctor mask. I'd say what he's got a skull there? with sparklers in it. It's not necessarily flaming. Well, I am. I am into this character. Yeah. If this was a character in Outsiders, it, this would be my favorite. I really like him. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't, I mean, this card's very good in assassin. I don't like this card because it's a dual card and it's like not great in ranger unless we get like more reload cards or arrows with go again. It's just like the lines to play it in a set or ranger are like a bit much. And the one cost means it still costs two cards if you play it on its own. However, in like Assassin, it can follow the weapons or in CC, it can follow like Black Tech Whisperers and then get played out. So it, it has a lot of applications there, I feel like. Um, and we don't know but, its rarity because this is a promo. Yeah, to me, it reads Assassin card, but I could be wrong. You know, it could still merit play in, in Ranger, especially with a lot of reload. Yeah. But a lot of reload cards don't buff non arrows, so um, you'd have to. Anyway, dude, I would be stoked. We play like attack from hand with go again, 
and then you blind Azalea in your death touch, I would be stoked. <laughs> okay. A <laughs> dream. Yeah. It, doesn't I mean, have it seems Dominator cool to enough. have just like powerful attack actions, you know, since uh, everything is so tied to the bow and maybe because, you know, the cost of Barb cast away. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. It, it feels like it maybe gives you a little flexibility, but also it is going against what Ranger kind of does and doesn't have go again on it. So we'll have to see. Like we said, almost no card, none of the cards spoiled have go again printed on them. So um, I guess Bonds of Ancestry has it as a conditional, but mm. uh, yeah, well, we'll see if anyone's going wide this set. Oh, the ninjas will be. Well, I mean, yeah, they, 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 they will be. They will be. They will be. Two Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Kadachi, Kadachi, attack. Stupid. Kadachi, I Kadachi, hope it's not a turtly <laughs> set. Like it ends up like old him. Fatigue old him was the bet, you know. Love it. It doesn't end up being like that. Fatigue, I'm just going to smack people around with fish as Riptide. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Take this. Trout attack. <laughs> Fistful of fish. <laughs> yeah. Blammo, this one with a big trout. bass. That's what you get for talking. <laughs> Salmon. Okay. Anyway, uh, <laughs> thanks for being here, everybody. Appreciate you all. Smack the subscribe and like buttons with your fish. Uh, helps us out. Uh, check out the other shows we're doing. Salmon suplex podcast. that subscribe button. <laughs> totally. Octopus <laughs> tentacle. <laughs> uh, and, you know, make sure you wash your hands. Uh, you don't want to get blood pox or uh or blood rot or any of that stuff so be safe out there everybody and we'll see you in the next episode goodbye goodbye bye